I think we can start now. Um, so, so, very good afternoon. We will be having other people coming in uh, to join us in a few minutes' time. Uh, right now, I'd like to welcome from uh, Lubumbashi in the Democratic uh, Republic of the Congo, uh, Gishlein Mbaila. Mabiala. Uh, Mabiala. Uh, <laughs> is that correct? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, fantastic. All right. And also from Khameroni uh, is uh, Obed Mukultani. Good afternoon, Obed. Good afternoon. Fantastic. And to everybody else joining us uh, on this uh, Will Our Conversations live from uh, Dawson House, the home of the National Gallery here in Blawayo, Zimbabwe. So we will start with you in Khaberoni, Obed, if you could just uh, give us the introductions so that the rest of the participants uh, can get to know you. All right, thanks, uh, Cliff. Well, uh, I'm Obed Robert Mukusani. Actually, I'm not in, in GAPS now, but I uh, work and live in Kanye. Kanye is about 100 k's from Habron. So I'm, uh, I'm an artist. I'm an independent curator. I'm also an art educator. Yeah. Fantastic. And then uh, in Lubumbashi, uh, Gishlan. Uh, well, do you mind introducing yourself to the participants? Okay. Um, je suis un artiste. Je vis à Lubumbashi. Uh, je fais la peinture, la sculpture et je fais aussi un peu de scénographie. Uh, ce qui est vrai que je suis dans les arts visuels en général. Okay. Yes. Kilan is a uh, visual artist who makes uh, sculpture, painting, and other things. Beautiful. Is, Thank you so much uh, for that uh, introduction. Um, Obed, I'm going to come back to you and welcome all these other participants. So tell us a little bit about your practice. Um, first, let's start with your practice studio practice as an artist and then we're going to move into you as a curator share ab more about your practice um uh, thanks um uh, i love to tell myself as a multidisciplinary artist i mm. do but uh, mostly i do printmaking ceramics uh paintings a bit when especially if it's commissions these days i don't just do paintings but uh, i'm also a researcher and um when i started art at an early age actually then i went to secondary school where i pursued it further then i enrolled with monopoly college of education where i did art education for secondary schools. Then uh, 2013 to 16, I was at Valley University of Technology in South Africa, studying at where I specialized in uh, printmaking and ceramics. So basically, as an artist, I touch almost everything. I also want to consider myself as a photographer. Now and then I do a few graphics. So yeah. Fantastic. Always good oh, yeah. to hear uh, colleagues from Botswana. And uh, with you, Gishlan, what exactly do you do in your practice uh, in terms of your work? Um, Oui, euh, après mes études euh, à, à l'Académie de Beaux-Arts, euh, je me suis lancé d'abord dans les arts euh, un peu 
c'était plus la peinture. Et ainsi de suite, j'ai connu un petit problème suite à des matériels par rapport à la réalité qu'on traverse dans le pays. Ce qui fait que j'ai migré de l'art académique à un art plus visuel, euh, puisque j'étais plus à ce qui se passe de mon et vu aussi que faisait et ce que nous faisions euh, par rapport à ce que nous avions appris à l'académie, ce qui m'a poussé aussi à avancer un peu plus loin. Et voilà, j'ai migré de l'art euh, académique vers euh, les arts un peu libres, euh, évolutifs, ce qui est euh, donc ce qu'on appelle les arts visuels, l'art contemporain. Donc, en ce moment, je suis dans, dans un art qui me pousse plus à, des, à un art de recherche. Euh, voilà, j'ai fait une série de recherches avant de travailler. Je, je m'intéresse sur voir un événement passé et c'est comme ça que j'évolue avec mon travail. Voilà, c'est un peu ça. Il en cesse d'être... He begins art after school. He, he, he studied at school, uh, at academic school, secondary. And after that, he makes more, uh, more work with like, like a, a student. And after that, he, he begin making a visual art, more, more painting, more and more, and uh, trying to, to be like a contemporary artist just to change the way of think the way of making the uh, the images or other things and he, he started working as a, a contemporary artist after that he uh, and after that he now is uh, working like a uh, more as as a researcher he make more research before working and that's why he, he go many places before he put a, he begin a new work and that's help him to to work he, he feel that before make a new series or a new project he have to make more research on on that subject like ishango and all other things and is interesting on the path of his country and on the future, something like this. And he mixed all things, making art uh, in, in a painting or other things. Okay, that's, that's very great. Uh, thank you. Uh, so Gishlan was a visiting artist here in Bulawayo uh, sometime and uh, i think ishango that is referring to i believe it's that uh, research that he was doing about the mathematical uh the beginning of maths calculations in africa is that correct Gishlan? Oui, euh, le travail d'Ishango, je l'ai commencé depuis 2015. Euh, si vous vous rappelez bien, on a échangé à Bulawayo. Bien sûr, c'est un travail que j'ai commencé ici. Ici, c'était juste un essai. Parce que j'ai essayé de faire un petit truc ici. Et voilà, juste après avoir présenté l'introduction du travail sur le bâton d'Ishango, ici à Lubumbashi, au musée de Lubumbashi, dans la galerie d'art contemporain, c'est comme ça que je suis venu à Bulawayo avec euh, le fond de Boelvetia, well comme ça s'est passé. Et voilà, c'est le même travail que j'ai tra fait à, euh, à Bulawayo, compte tenu des réalités aussi que j'ai vues. Alors, je voulais associer un, un, un plus sur mon travail par rapport à, à la réalité, aux couleurs, à, à la vie que j'ai vue. Euh, à Bulawayo, la vie de, 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 de Zimbabweens. Et c'est le même travail que j'ai présenté, euh, que j'ai fait, que j'ai fait en évolution à la National Gallery de Bulawayo. 
c'est exactement le même travail, mais en évolution. Donc, la deuxième étape, c'était euh, à Bulawayo et je suis à la quatrième étape, juste après Bulawayo. J'ai été aussi à un autre endroit et après, je suis revenu encore au Congo et j'ai continué toujours avec le travail sur les chambres. Donc, c'est un travail d'évolution. Um, Gilans began his project in 2015, and that the project began here in Congo and at Lubumbashi. It was the first time he he, he worked on it and like uh, examples like uh, research, more making researches. And after that, he goes at uh, Bulawayo in Zimbabwe. That he meets many people who was no as get knowledge on it and that is make months and help him to to uh, to extend the project and after that he goes to another place in Europe to to learn more and he continue even now to work on it and now it's uh, really take a, a big place and a, a, a form, a big a new novel form, a big uh, one and that is, uh, it's, yes, he is still working on it and continue to, to, to explore it and to, to change more and more. Merci beaucoup, uh, Kishlan. And then moving on to um, Obed. Um, so share with us about the art scene in Botswana. I've been there a couple of times and I've been experimenting or rather seeing some potentially beautiful and uh, creative artists in Botswana. Do you want to share a little bit about the art scene in Botswana for the benefit of some other participants here? Oh yeah. Yeah, um, which way can I start? Uh, well, uh, if, if, if you talk about the artists themselves, and uh, in recent years we've seen a significant growth in the number of emerging contemporary artists, and uh, that on its own, I think somehow poses a uh, a challenge on the fact that we do not have uh, a lot of art centers around, we do not have a lot of galleries around, so like the few galleries that are there, most of them are in the capital city in Gaborone. And then if you move out of the city, you know, you just have a few museums who now and then have uh, exhibitions, but uh, not much. So this uh, new boom in the emergence of new artists is, is a challenge that we need to respond to. And uh, perhaps the issue has been that all along, up until today, we still don't have uh, an arts council. Uh, but uh, the new development in that line is that uh, there's, there's, there's something happening. They've already drafted a bill for the establishment of the council which I think is a very good development and think maybe after its establishment, then we'll see a more rapid growth. And like you're saying, Zulu, it's, uh, there's a lot of potential. You know, when I met uh, Chipukwa in, in Cape Town, he defined the art scene in Botswana and he said uh, Botswana is a sleeping giant because I think like you're saying, you've seen a lot of potential here. Um, we have a few challenges here, which we think once put in place, then we will be joining the whole art world as well and showcasing our art. So perhaps with the new council that we, I think very soon it will be established, we'll start seeing, you guys will start seeing more of us and more of us one now representing this country and showing the world what we really possess here because like we said, there's a lot, there's a lot that uh, is happening. It, 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 we lack a little bit of support, especially financially. I understand it's almost a global issue. Uh, when I was in Cape Town and then we may, I met other, other colleagues from 
around the world. I discovered that the issue of finance is actually a global issue, but uh, it seems like here it's, it's even worse, but because art funding this side is, is a bit difficult for some reason, but we are seeing development here and there. And uh, typically with this COVID thing, and you see that other sectors are getting relief funds and everything, the art scene seemed to be neglected a bit until I think after a few artists tried to stand up and fight for their rights. And then we, the Department of Arts and Culture put up uh, a call for associations to register for the relief. And then also FNDB also came on board looking for associations that represent artists so you see that basically that's that those are the only two that tried to help the artists in these trying times. So that's an indication that funding this side is still uh, an issue, but uh, we hope things will really get better in the future. And then, uh, well, in terms of facilities, like I said, we have a few galleries around, we've got a few private galleries and commercial galleries, one or two maybe we have most of the artists in Botswana, they rely mostly on Tapong, Tapong Visual Arts Center, which is in Gaboroni. Or I've been trying to, I've been working with, I've been a member of Tapong for some time, and then we've been working together uh, on certain projects over the years. So most artists, even when they, they, they after schooling, and then they join the art market, they, they try to associate themselves with Tapong. Other than that, there are one or two other associations or organizations around. So we need to start growing uh, art associations. We need to start having more curators because one thing that inspired me to pursue the, the, the curation was that we do not have curators around. You know, we have only few that I can just count maybe less than 10. And I think with more curators, then I think we can start seeing projects that are trying to grow the industry, you know, exponentially. But uh, until that happens and, you know, artist management, artist organizations, you know, things will really get better. But in terms of potential, there are a lot of great artists in this country. That one I can assure you. Myself, I can be an example. You know, we met in Cliff uh, in 2017 when I won Tapong Artist of the Year Award and Cliff was actually the judge, one of the, 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 the panel. And uh, I engaged with you then and yes, you did express that you see a lot of potential and all these issues are the ones that are holding artists back. But we hope someone will listen out there and we start seeing more you know, entities trying to contribute to the development of the artist and the art scene in this country. So, Fantastic. Yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, congratulations to Botswana for the policy, drafting of the policy of establishing the National Arts Council in Botswana. It's I think it's beautiful, absolutely long overdue, and yeah. certainly in the right direction in establishing or formalizing the creative sector in Botswana. But I think uh, from um, other countries, I see Project Room is online, but it's in other parts of the, con of, the, of the region in Southern Africa, you'll probably see that they are at different levels. Uh, for example, here in Zimbabwe, we do have the National Arts Council, the National Galleries as regulatory institutions and perhaps in other spaces within Zimbabwe, you'll find out that they are complaining about maybe being over-regulated or censored by these government bodies. So good luck on that aspect in Botswana. <laughs> good luck on that. Um, Gishlan, I know that uh, in uh, Lubumbashi, you were working with uh, Santa Duwaza, and uh, how important is it for you as a plastician to work with institutions like Centre Duwaza?
Euh, oui, euh, la première des choses, c'est qu'il n'y a pas beaucoup de centres ici à Lubumbashi, euh, puisque moi je suis de Lubumbashi. Dans la capitale, il y a quand même beaucoup d'institutions d'art euh, par rapport à, à la réalité ici à Lubumbashi. Donc ici à Lubumbashi, nous n'avons que deux, deux institutions comme centre d'art. Mais travailler avec Waza, c'est vraiment une très grande chose parce que avec les institutions comme Waza, nous avons euh, euh, un côté du côté recherche et des centres d'art nous mettent aussi euh, en connexion avec d'autres centres d'art de l'extérieur ou euh, en fait d'autres centres d'art dans d'autres pays et toutes les réalités donc nous recevons l'actualité de ce que d'autres artistes font dans d'autres pays travailler avec Waza pour moi c est, c est, ça, c est, ça a été d'abord une très grande chose et bonne et Waza m'a permis d'évoluer puisque le fait de fréquenter chaque fois l'espace de Waza, il y a beaucoup d'activités qui se passent là-bas. Il y a une autre façon de travailler par rapport à ce que l'artiste lui-même peut faire de son côté. Mais travailler avec les institutions, les institutions d'art, c'est que c'est comme travailler, c'est comme un train sur un rail. Donc, vous n'avez, euh, il y a de logique, il y a des, des règles à suivre, il y a des réalités. Bien sûr qu'il y a des difficultés dedans, mais vous sentez que vous êtes dirigé. Donc, c'est comme si vous êtes dans un véhicule où vous avez un chauffeur digne de confiance. Donc, euh, l'expérience de Patrick m'a beaucoup aidé dans la vie. Bien sûr, ça a été difficile au début. L'expérience, comme on, on, on ne fait que venir, euh, de, on a eu des, des, des difficultés tout au début. À un certain moment, euh, j'ai suivi les conseils, il y a beaucoup d'échanges qui se passent à Oasa avec d'autres artistes qui viennent de l'extérieur. Il, il y a des ateliers, il y a des, il y a des conférences, il y a aussi des, des, des échanges d'idées quand il y a euh, des, des, des informations, ils nous mettent ensemble et ils nous demandent de penser tout autour de la question qui est soulevée, sur l'actualité, sur, 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 sur l'histoire passée ou sur ce que le centre projette à l'avenir. Donc, travailler avec les instituts, les instituts comme OASA, moi, je pense que c'est vraiment une chance que j'ai eue dans ma vie, puisqu'on est beaucoup à Lubumbashi, il y a beaucoup d'artistes, mais qui n'ont pas la chance d'être plus accueilli. Le centre accueille tout le monde, mais le centre est en train de voir aussi le travail qui est fait dans différents artistes. Donc voilà, et avec ça, il y a tellement de soutien, il y a l'accompagnement qui vient après, il y a des conseils, il y a toute une liste de, que je peux étaler. Mais en un mot, c'est que travailler avec les instituts des institutions, c'est vraiment une très bonne chose pour les artistes pour voir l'évolution de leur travail et cet échange entre artistes, centres d'art et d'autres artistes. D'accord. Ok, I, I'll try to, to translate it. Uh, Ilan, yeah, it's all very Okay, Gilan says that um, Lubumbashi is not, uh, there is no many, many centers like artists to work at that centers. And to meet Waza like center, it was for him like a, a, a chance because Waza helped him to to share many, many information, to, to be, to have access to many things like uh, documentation, like uh, to be in contact with other people. 
like to exchange with other centers. And that's why he, he said it was a good thing for him and uh, it's helping him very, very helpful for him that uh, because he, he meets like a, 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 strat a, a structure which take him and show him the way, show him uh, some things. Because he, as an artist, it's difficult to be known for outside. But uh, the center helped him to, to be in exchange with the outside people, the, the other centers. And in the beginning, it was difficult for him to understand that, that uh, it was like a platform of exchange and other things. It was like uh, an artist who come and don't understand many, many things, like uh, to be in order with uh, something. But at, after some time, he take, he take that uh, things and he, he understand that he have to, to be more and more uh, in contact with that center because of uh, showing his work that, uh, that he's saying. Thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, almost three o'clock now, so I think we'll open up uh, the conversation to the rest of the participants to also come in and join in the conversation. Today's topic is flexibility and adaptability a as a resilience enabler, seeing that a lot of artists in the continent, in particular in this part of the country, have also been struggling be it COVID-19 uh, lockdown or be it lack of resources for them to practice whatever they want to express or be it there is the lack of institutions that are supposed to be taking care of uh, the needs and the aspirations of the artists. I just hinted a bit about Botswana in as much as they are excited about the beautiful new uh, framework that they are putting in place. I'm sure they will be joining us soon to highlight how these organizations are somewhat regulating them to do or express themselves very well. Welcome, Ed Chambers uh, in London. Welcome, the Project Room in uh, Namibia. Welcome, David Tinyama in Canada. Welcome, colleagues from Harare, and welcome uh, to all the participants. If you're joining us live on Facebook, please do join us. We would really love for you to participate in this conversation. Now, any contributions from the participants to the ongoing conversations about this flexibility and adaptability? Because we've seen a lot of artists adapting to various scenarios in order for them to survive. One of which is language barriers, as you can see, within the continent of Africa. Any takers as we move forward? Okay, so while I invite the questions and comments to come in, on the chat there I've put the two biographies for the two artists and also some of the links on Facebook that we can be looking at. Now, Obed, um, you have begun a journey into a curatorial practice in Botswana, one of the many challenges or one of the many lack uh, that has been observed in that country. But I can acknowledge that there are so many wonderful artists in Botswana and Botswana artists living outside of the country. I mean, I can talk about Meleko Mohosi uh, doing wonderful uh, works outside of the country. What do you think that means, how are you adapting? How flexible are you to move in between curating and being in the studio? I, um, as artist, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a given, it's, a, it's, a, it's part of the public of being an artist that, uh, you need to like be flexible enough to move between your social life you know and uh, uh, 
other disciplines and other spheres in life, but as an artist and a curator and educator, it has not been that simple because um, you need to constantly shift uh, between your, 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 your work as, a, as an art educator, your daily job as an art educator, and uh, try to find uh, you know, a point of convergence where these two needs to, to meet and to kind of inform each other. And uh, just to highlight maybe on that point, uh, it, it, it's also like a, an access for what we are trying to push with the Visual Arts Forum to ed ed educators in Southern Africa, uh, Vafesa, uh, for which I'm the chairperson, where we are seeing art educators are also practitioners and they are also researchers. So we have created that platform whereby we try to bring uh, art educators in Southern Africa together to share ideas on their studio practice as well as on pedagogical strategies and methodologies and see how also that can also inform the research you know like uh, you have uh, practice-led research uh, from which uh, knowledge can be derived from your practice but then again you have to take that also if you're an ed ed educator to your classroom and inform your teaching methodologies so there uh, flexibilities is we are trying to work on on that to say to art educators as well that they can try to find uh, that point where they can um, converge or, or, or bring everything together, you know, for, for, as, a, as a, to coexist so that uh, we can grow knowledge within the art field. But then again, uh, resilience, resilience on its own is a, is a, is a term that speaks to, to flexibility, to optimism, to, you know, some of the traits, uh, uh, you know, where we create a, a creative synergy of the disciplines that you have. So with resilience, you can have uh, a point where you, 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 you become innovative, you know, become dynamic and you, you bring it, it, it informs and uh, promotes the uh, interdisciplinarity there because you can no longer be static and focus on one thing. The world is changing rapidly, and as it changes, we also need to adapt to the changes. It, like you said, it's not only COVID 19, you know, we, we, we had to adjust uh, in a few years ago when the recession came and hit us, more like COVID is hitting us and uh, we needed to be flexible enough and adapt to the new ways of doing things you know socially economic economically creatively so it is not that easy but um, it is something that we really really need to 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 adapt and uh, make part of our existence especially that uh, artists kind of mirror what society does you know we, we 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 uh, we, are, we advocate for 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 social changes. We we promote uh, social economic and uh, many many uh, exigencies that uh, inform the society. So you know this flexibility and adaptability, one way or the other, is very essential because societies you need to build resilient societies that are ready to face and uh, you know somehow conquer whatever challenge that is there and it is the role of that to be such an enabler so at uh, there plays a very role, a very crucial point uh, in promoting flexibility and adaptability but Personally, as an artist, as a curator, an educator, as you, you try to balance everything, it is not as easy as it sounds, but uh, we need to get by and we need to live and move on with life. So basically, yeah. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to Katie uh, Kwati, also in uh, Haberoni. Welcome to the conversation. Any comments so far? Uh, if you're joining us now, we are talking to uh, Gishlan in uh, Lubumbashi in DRC, and also we are talking to uh, Obet Mokushani in uh, Botswana. Um, let's look at the other aspect about the practice in Southern Africa, the ability to interconnect as artists, the reason probably why we are having a Francophone country and an Anglophone country is to try and find ways within Southern Africa, like you said, Obed, that we need to find all these convergence zones so that artists within the region can also uh, begin to explore what other artists are doing within their context so that as we move maybe to West Africa or to beyond uh, the seas, we will be able to have a clear understanding of what we are doing. Uh, Gishlan is doing a wonderful research or rather exploring the Ishango concept so that he can, that inspires most of his works taking from the leaf while he was resident artist here. Um, any, any contributions so far? Yeah. We're just waiting for Gishlan to for the translation to take place. So if you just want to take part and uh, answer a question, you can just hit the hand, the reaction button there, and then we can pick it up from there and move on. Okay, fantastic. Eddie, what's your comment from a person based outside of the continent um, looking at these um, the flexibility and adaptability of artists uh, in, the, in the current, or if not the current, uh, challenges. What, what's your take on that, Eddie? Yeah, well, um, let, me, let me, me first say how much of a pleasure, how much it's a pleasure to be part, part of this, this exchange. This is, this is a wonderful, it's, it, this, this is a wonderful conversation and it's uh, it's extraordinary the ways in which the internet it kind of enables these this this to happen um it's not long obviously the internet has been with us for a long time but um uh i think it's really only since the onset of covid that we've been able to have these kind of zoom forums and they're they're, they're extraordinary uh, I just imagine how hard it would be, how how expensive it would be to have all these people from different parts of the continent in the same space. Um, um, uh, um, the internet clearly clearly creates other possibilities, and this is a wonderful example of that. So I just wanted to say that first of all, Cliff, and thank you so much for organising this, and thank you so much for bringing bringing it to to my attention. Um, you know, you ask a you ask a great question, and of course, the the subjects of the the subjects of this exchange are hugely important. And what I, one thing I would say is that um, these conversations they speak to the ways in which um, art practices, arts infrastructures within the continent within the continent are growing, growing in stature growing in significance um, um so there's a there's a there's a there's a certain arc there's a movement that's taking place in which um there's increased att increased attention to studio studio spaces for artists increased attention to spaces in which artists might um show their work uh increased increased possibilities in terms of artists selling work these are all increasing in wonderful ways, and they all speak of the ways in which 
the work the work of contemporary artists within Africa um, 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 is not so much does not so much exist at the present time in terms of an export. We've got used to contemporary artists exporting their work outside the continent to New York, London, and wherever. We now see, as is witnessed by everybody in this in, in on in on this conversation, that there are growing ways in which um, 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 there are some there are Africa-centric, Africa-focused initiatives that are growing in stature. Um, um, so certainly we think about to five, ten years ago, there was much less in the ways of these initiatives. Um, think about 20, 30 years ago, there's even less. We can imagine that in, in five, 10, 15 years time, the infrastructure within Africa to support contemporary artists is going to be even stronger. So these um, these are these are wonderful. These are wonderful um, um, steps forward. There's a, a progress in terms of the ways in which contemporary African art is historicized, is written about, is curated, um, um, and this conversation speaks to those things. Um, some of the challenges, of course, facing artists within. Um, uh, the, the African continent, contemporary artists, um, uh, in some respects, quite similar to um, challenges facing artists throughout, throughout the world. Um, um, there are some things about the challenges within the African continent that are quite specific, but in other respects, some of the challenges are, are, are more broadly faced. Some of the specific challenges, um, I think, relate to um, relate to um, curating and writing. Um, clearly there are more people involved in curating exhibitions, but this is something that needs to be strengthened and deepened, either through residences or through people traveling and learning about curating in other parts of the continent, possibly outside of the continent. Um, and writing is also a hugely important aspect of this. Um, of course, we're talking about a situation really in which um, it's likely that to be a contemporary artist within Africa, one might well have to be writing, one might well have to be organising exhibitions, one might well have to be doing a whole, all these things at the same time. Because, right. we're, because there's not the luxury of saying, well, certain people curate and certain other people make art. You know, the, 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 the pressure is really on artists to, to wear a number of hats, um, which is, of course, is part of the conversation you, you, you are having. I mean, pretty much all the artists you're speaking to are wearing multiple hats. So this is a very much a necessary part of, of, of advancing art practice across the continent. Uh -huh. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Eddie. It's always uh, good to hear from you. Um, at this moment, anyone can come in while we are having this conversation so that we don't have an interview. Um, David, um, we are adapting to this new normal. Uh, we are being flexible to change and adapt to Zoom, for example. We have to change to adapt to these new um, ways of practicing art. What's your take on these um, aspects of being flexible? It's good to be here, uh, being able to connect with other creatives from different places. I think mm -hmm. I'll just sum up, uh, uh, adding to what Eddie has just said. I think um, the um, emergence of COVID, I mean, like, um, it's something that just happened naturally, caught many of us unaware. I remember, I mean, like being one of those people who panicked um, at the first week when government started closing borders and everything that they were closing the port of entries. Imagine what's going, what's, what was going to happen in the future, uh, in the months to come. I mean, like, having been that artist of ready made plans um, of exhibitions and art fairs across the world um, uh, from May to, 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 to around August, I panicked. But later on, I realized somehow, I mean, like that shift, I mean, like something that has just happened naturally, we had to quickly adapt to other ways. So 
I found myself, I mean, like, um, looking at other ways, like, uh, conditions um, from my side, at least being able to reach out to those people uh, that my, um, I could not actually reach, reach to because of this. Well, I think, I mean, like, um, um, COVID itself, I mean, like, this current situation has helped in some way, as much as a lot of uh, negative um, effects out of it. A lot of positivity that now, uh, with the shift to online to the virtual um, exhibits, virtual platforms, we are able to reach to a lot of um, people, a bigger audience compared to the traditional spaces where you would have an exhibition in one space. So it meant that only people within that space would be able to see your work. But like now with this, um, um, how we are adapting to the, the virtual space and like people getting connected um, so easily by internet, we are able to reach to many people. I can um, testify that when I had my first virtual exhibition in May, I couldn't believe the response that they were for, uh, for my work. Um, the traffic on my website increased by almost 400% of which I never expected. So you, you can see, I mean, with all this, I think it's just a matter of time where as artists and where as collectors now, we're getting used to this virtual space that you can still uh, reach out, you can still show your work to the audience um, in, in, uh, from your studio. And also like for the collector, they can still collect uh, um, work, they can still uh, be able to attend to many exhibitions in the comfort of their home. So I see a lot of uh, positive, um, uh, positive aspect that may come out of, the, out of this. Well, it may take time, but I see it in a good way. Absolutely, indeed. Uh, thank you. So I, I, I'm picking up a very common um, activity that also happened uh, maybe here in Zimbabwe. A lot of artists did panic uh, once the uh, borders, the announcement of the lockdown was uh, made. And uh, like you are saying, slowly we are seeing uh, these new ways in which artists are beginning to practice again. Uh, yeah. Eddie brought up an element of, we used to know it as don't be a jack of all trades and master of none. But we are beginning <laughs> to see that change now to see uh, how best can I put together all these skills so that they can assist in my practice moving forward and also be able to to write about my work because definitely here in Africa, in Zimbabwe in particular, writing and studio work seems to be completely two different things. Uh, we've got Dumisani here, who is one of the longest serving members of the visual arts community here in Bulawayo. He does very well uh documentation of his work so much that he's able to tell you uh what print he did in which year and that's beautiful but like eddie pointed out it's lacking someone to come in and put it say in a publication and then upload it in a website so that more and more people can uh, benefit from that uh obed did you panic in in um in Botswana, I know that your government yesterday announced that uh, your galleries can now open. Yet here in Zimbabwe, we are still reviewing uh, any chances of reopening the creative spaces. Did you panic, Obed? Um, yes, yes, uh, I did panic, and uh, quite a lot of other artists as well because uh, we have a very small market we have uh, so most people were wondering how is it that you're going to reach out to the few clients that we have who can actually buy our work but then as this progressed and then uh, the virtual platforms came on board we started sharing I mean, on facebook i remember one uh, creative uh, another artist here started a challenge uh, where she would nominate an artist and then an artist would share their, their work online for 10 days, 10 works. So somehow I think that also made us uh, calm a bit and the, the response like uh, uh, David was saying was so enormous that uh, we didn't even expect that and uh, people shared our works more than uh, the, the, the 
more than before because uh, I think most of people since they were we were on lockdown and uh, most people were in their homes, the only thing that they could do would be online. So that I think for the artists gave us that hope that no, actually it's not all lost. We actually made more connections and uh, that I think is the most important thing to an artist, you know. Networking is the most important thing to an artist and these virtual platforms like uh, Ed you are saying, I think uh, uh, so some sort of a blessing in disguise because we managed to take our work out there and have a lot of people all around the world having the opportunity to see what it is, it is that we do. But from the beginning, everyone was in panic. We, the, 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 there was no hope at all, but we had each other at the end of the day. So we, we managed to pull through and that is exactly what resilience is all about. You know, the ability to bounce back, you know, you, you just need a, a launch pad, something that a springboard that just kicks you back into action and as I see now on Facebook, I think ever since those challenges by Loretta Nyepe, an artist here, mm -hmm. artists have now take, gone back to the studios, they are painting in their small rooms. And well, thankfully yesterday, the restrictions on galleries were lifted. We do not know for how long, but right. even if they were to come back again, but then we wouldn't panic anymore because we now have ways of reaching out to our clients and potential buyers, so, yeah. Fantastic, so this is actually turning out to be fantastic uh, news uh, for most of the artists uh, here. Um, it is. Gishlan, um, in terms of being flexible and adapting, so you travel a lot between the continent and Europe, um, how flexible are you to get into a studio, say from Bulawayo to Lubumbashi, from Lubumbashi, say to an European studio? How do you work that out? Is it easy for you to just get there and start kicking and moving? Or do you need to flex yourself and adapt to the conditions in that space? Oh, we've lost uh, Kishlan there. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah. I think you will rejoin us uh, back uh, when you reconnect. Um, yeah. Namibia, hi. How are things in the project room? Hi, how are you? Good to see you Fantastic. guys. Thank you. Good, good. No, all good here. Freezing at the moment. I'm not sure if it is going that far inland. Um, but yeah, freezing from Cape Town side, um, otherwise fine. Yes. Fantastic. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, how is the scene there at the project room in Namibia? We've been seeing a lot of exhibitions taking place. How would you say the artists in Namibia, or the, at least the ones that you are working with, are adapting um, to the current uh, or to any other situations that may be thrown at them? I think I think it is a great struggle for many, um, but um, there are some artists that have been creating a lot during lockdown. Our lockdown was very short. We had about five weeks lockdown, um, and now the stages are um, uh, yeah opening actually fairly fast. Um, although Namibia has quite a lot of cases by now, um, but yeah, this adapting to the no new normal is um yeah it's, it's a challenge for artists for for a gallery um both the the last exhibition i had at the gallery was completely created in lockdown the next exhibition is um greatly influenced by this whole COVID and the changing of times so it definitely influences the artists as a gallery you have to do a lot online you go um, yeah, it's quite a bit of extra work, but it has also a lot of um, yeah positive things. Where online you connect to uh, um, to people that you otherwise would never have the chance to connect to. So um, otherwise you are just uh, have the Namibian market. Now you can 
connect to more international markets. So that has been really good. Uh, absolutely. Um, I'm going to pose another question, uh, picking up from Eddie's contribution. Um, one of the advices coming from Eddie is the longer term challenges for artists across the continent will be nurturing writers and curators who are aware of the uh, nuances of living and working in the continent. Um, I think we touched this last uh, week when we were talking to uh, the, during the conversation last week and bringing it now, this has been quite a challenge looking at artists from a studio base moving to working with uh, a gallery, for example, private or national, and then also engaging, you know, writers. It's a, it, these are different skills all together uh, bringing it into administration. I think these are very interesting ways in which we artists will need to adapt so that they are able to put these things together. Um, Obed, are you seeing the same? Are you thinking around that direction? Obviously, you're curating and practicing, and now you are looking forward to the, uh, is it the Francistown uh, Art Fair? Oh, sure. Yes, um, we are. And uh, it, it, it's a very important uh, uh, observation that Ed is making there, especially on writing, because uh, we have very few biographers who write about, or even journalists who just follow artists around and uh, document their practices. So, I think, like Eddie is suggesting, is something that we need to look into uh, critically and uh, try to find ways in which we can encourage. You may find that uh, actually most artists uh, are self-taught sometimes, and uh, uh, some have not gone far with education, but for those who have had the opportunity to maybe study further, they can take that up and uh, maybe do a bit of writing and uh, we are yes yes i'm also curating the francis town arts meeting it's, it's an exhibition that is happening in francis town because uh, it is france is our second city we haven't had a lot of art activities in that city so the the found one of the founders mr well i just call him spokes mm -hmm. they, they found the need to try and uh, bring art to the north because like I said earlier on, the few galleries that we have are in the south, in, in the capital city. So we are now trying to, you know, broaden the, 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 the scope and access to art because uh, art needs to be accessed by all. You know, it, it's even more of a, of a fundamental right these days because, well, that's what Ines is suggesting anyway. So, um, the Franstown Arts Meeting the exhibition will be around October, but before then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, FNB came on board to invite uh, associations that are representing artists to apply for funding. So fortunately, Franstown Arts Meeting, we managed to win the <coughs> visual arts sector, so we'll be having an online, uh, it will be in two parts anyway. Um, the first part will be an exhibition where we commission about 10 artists to create works that will then transform into billboards and then put around the city. And then the other part, which was very important to FNB here, was where we have to have an online educational lesson, sort of. So one of the topics, in fact, there will be only two topics. One will be on copyright and the creative industry. And then the other one will be on trying to build the, the, the artist profile where we, want, where we are aiming to impart knowledge to the artist on how to write their own biographies, how to write artist statements, and uh, how to compile a very comprehensive uh, portfolio. So 
without getting too much details is yeah we just we just informed yesterday about that and i think with the artist in botswana they've been informed on how that will go go on but then yeah that's what we are looking forward to and then uh, we were also looking forward to the vafesa exhibition this year but it did not happen because of covid but uh, we had to readjust and adapt and be flexible to say we'll take it next year, but then we'll give each country the opportunity now to host their mini exhibitions in their respective countries before we come together because as COVID has restricted movements, so we can no longer gather, but at least eventually each country will host their own exhibition uh, between now and June next year. So we'll take it from there and see how we can adapt to these new new models of um, connectivity because physicality is no longer a viable option as it is and no one knows the extent to which this COVID will really go so for now we are we are trying to adapt and be flexible and and be resilient at the very same time you know so yeah Fantastic and Hello, congratulations uh, to, to you guys Hi. for winning that funding. Um, Kate, hello. Hi. Hello, Kate. Fantastic. Hello. How are you adapting as a, as a multitasker? Uh, you are in Khaberonia. Um, how are you adapting to all these new are you flexible? Uh, is it enabling you to be resilient and still be uh, online? Um, one had to work around it. Um, actually, like Odette was saying, hello everyone, let me greet everyone before saying anything. Um, I believe we had to adopt to this new normal as it hit us hard when we least expected it so every one of us had to find a way of you know being on board because staying away from the creative arts or meant had to address we had to find ways of, you know, just being around. Um, what came through for us here, like all that said earlier, was when everybody was shattered, not knowing where to go, what to do, how they were going to go about it, the Facebook challenge came and so like well, you would get even invitations from across the borders, South Africa, Namibia, we had people doing the challenge with us. And you know, that was very interesting in the sense that it wasn't only us, you know, we had a chance to interact with other artists from across the globe through the Facebook challenge. And there that is where we got friends because you know you didn't get just Facebook peer leaders, I would call them. That um, right? being <laughs> yeah, where you know where everybody sees your art on Facebook mm -hmm. and then they go, oh, oh it's nice. You know, you we had a chance to interact with other artists who would actually critique your work and you know help you move forward grow as an artist so yeah um, Fantastic. yeah thank we you are Kate. Getting there. We, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's very interesting coming uh from you there and uh moving on to the gallery studios uh to dumisan in Lovo one of the veteran artists here in Bulawayo, Dumisan in Lovo. Um, how are you finding all this thing of adapting, working from home and working into the gallery studios and finding some space of being resilient in between? Hi, 
Yeah, Mr. Zola, yeah, it's difficult. But we are now uh, getting using used to shoot train and so forth and so on. Uh, it's quite difficult. But we are adapting. Thank you so much there to, to Ms. Anindlovo. Uh, final remarks, uh, welcome back. Uh, oh, he's gone again. Uh, final remarks, Obet, uh, as we close the discussion. All right. Um, earlier on, you touched on something on uh, uh, artists in the region, uh, networking and collaborating. And I think the, the, the best way that uh, we can actually overcome all these other challenges as, as a region is to actually come together as artists, as curators. And, you know, like you are doing right now with this conversation, you know, trying to reach out to uh, artists and art practitioners within the, the African continent. And uh, it, 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 it's a very, it's a very, great uh, uh, trajectory that we need to 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 focus on you know when i went to to namibia for the tulipang in, in 2018 uh, upon coming back i engaged the tap on to say we haven't had an international uh, workshop ever since i came into the art scene i've never seen one so what about uh, we we start one immediately because i understood that uh, it it it, uh, it builds on uh, on networks. It builds on exchange, cultural exchange, as well as uh, mm -hmm. you know where we, we you, you kind of import and export knowledge and skills within the arts. So uh, I think collaboration is one thing that we need to to go on about it. You know, we need some sort of uh, a rigorous. Uh, mind shift where we have a borderless kind of artistic spaces where we can easily engage and well thanks to COVID I should say because now the virtual is enabling that very fast we didn't <laughs> quite expect it to be on that level you know and uh, we have a project that we still need to discuss you know I just <laughs> I just proposed it to you the other day and uh, I've been very busy with other stuff but those are the, the that's the line that I'm very much interested in to see a pan African engagement, you know, especially starting with our with Africa is like South Africa is here, and then all of us need to follow with Botswana amongst somewhere there in the in the low regions. So I think if we can come together, all of us, and work. Uh, together as curators and artists and all those involved in the arts, we can really take uh, our region far. So I look forward to more collaborations from not only anyway, not only in Southern Africa, but Africa as a whole and the world, but we just need to get connected and come together to, to, to fight all these things. And like Adi mentioned, the issue of exporting our art to New York and London, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge because we, we are not promoting art consumerism here in our country. We, that's why we have a very small market where we have only a few collectors. But if you can come together and exchange ideas on how we can actually grow these industries, I think we're going to start seeing a lot of people now appreciating and buying art locally and within the continent. and. That way we will retain what is only ours and you know, in the end turn art into tourism where now those Londoners and the New Yorkers will really have to just come and see it here rather than us exporting our cultural uh, products to them for them to consume and we are left with nothing. Indeed, so, indeed. Yeah. Absolutely. These are very powerful and very uh, fascinating. Yeah, submissions there are uh, coming from you, Obed. And indeed, you mentioned these uh, workshops, these international workshops. I think Tulipamwe, uh, Tupelo in South Africa, it used to be Pachipamwe here in Zimbabwe. Mm. These are some of the projects that need to continue happening once the mm. ability for people to converge is uh, sure. available so that we can see how powerful this can be. Uh, Chris Ophili was here in 1983 
and uh, through that the cow dung or using of dung has always been the best uh, from those workshops. Uh, Gishlan, your final remarks as we close the uh, conversation. I see your translator is not there for now, but uh, just go ahead and give us your final remarks. Uh, you will need to unmute first. Okay. Okay. It's my first time. <laughs> it's okay. You are adopted. Uh, okay. Bon, en fait, euh, mon ami vient de partir. Mm -hmm. C'est lui qui, qui faisait la traduction pour moi. Bon, en fait, euh, pour le moment, je ne sais pas la question, elle est comment, puisque je viens de mettre mes écouteurs. Et euh, voilà, je ne sais pas si vous pouvez re, re, reprendre la question puisque là, je n'ai pas bien compris. Aïe, aïe, aïe. Harare, thank you to uh, everybody else who's participating. Until next week, uh, thank you so much for this wonderful. Thank you very much, Clifford. Thank you.